Welcome to A Line Through Time, where I write most of a script and then do nothing with it for almost two years. Yeah, I started scripting this back in March 2018 and gave up because this shit is way too expansive. Okay, so Sword Art Online, a series that is basically the Japanese Twilight, beloved and reviled in equal measure and watched by everyone except those in the middle. Making videos on this series is often seen as low-hanging fruit or for easy views, but let me assure you now, this video is purely in the latter camp, so thanks for clicking please stick around and hopefully you'll be entertained and maybe even educated. Admittedly, this would probably have gotten more views without the two year wait since no one outside of the series fan base and Jeff Thru actually care about it anymore. Sword Art Online started as a light novel written by one Reki Kawahara for a story contest in 2002 which he couldn't actually enter due to exceeding the page limit. He released it online and then entered the contest in 2008 with Excel World, not to be confused with Excel Saga. Excel World won the grand prize and both series were picked up for official release by ASC2 Media Works in 2009 beginning exactly two months apart and continuing to this day. But why is all this relevant? Well, because both series are implied to actually be set in the same universe, which I'll explain later. We're going to be focusing on the light novel continuity rather than the myriad adaptations the two series have received. Now, keep in mind, I've never actually seen or read SAO, nor do I have any desire to do so, so if you notice any mistakes, I don't know, blame Kawahara's concepts for not drawing me in or something. SAO is about a bunch of people who become trapped inside the titular virtual reality MMORPG, where if you die in the game, you die for real. Original. I know. Main protagonist Kazuto Kirigaya or Kirito, Gary Stu Extraordinaire, is the best player of it and just about any other game, is a genius programmer and hacker, and attracts all the ladies who continue to follow him around even after he's effectively married. After escaping the game, Kirito and friends start having adventures inside other VR MMOs despite their traumatic experience, because this type of story is supposed to end once the heroes escape the death game so everyone has to be written as subhuman retards for the series to continue. We'll be discussing the series by sub-series rather than release order because Kawahara actually writes one of the spin-offs as well as the core series and Excel worlds releasing multiple volumes of each per year, which probably explains the reported quality of the writing somewhat. The core SAO series currently rests at 23 volumes long. They follow a mostly linear progression, but not completely. Volume 1 follows the main story of Kirito's time inside SAO, the Aincrad arc, while Volume 2 is a series of short stories set during this time span which the anime adapted all in chronological logical order. From here, the series progresses linearly with Volume 3 and 4's Fairy Dance arc, 5 and 6's Phantom Bullet arc, and Volume 7, Mother's Rosario. Volume 8, Early and Late, is a series of three short stories. A murder case in the area is a murder mystery set during Aincrad. Calibre is set in the present with Kirito and friends doing a new quest in Alfheim, and First Day follows Kirito's early loner days in Aincrad and the moment he first faced his own mortality. There was also an alternate version of Calibur that diverges at a certain point and apparently released two months before the book. Either version takes place between Phantom Bullet and the next arc, so we'll place it there. Volumes 9 through 18, seriously, are one massive linear arc, Alicization. Volumes 19 and 20 are the Moon Cradle arc, which is a side story set towards the end of Alicization. Volumes 21 and 23 are part of the ongoing Unital Ring arc, continuing on from Alicization. Volume 22 is a series of four side stories. The Day Before is yet another story set during Aincrad, detailing the days following Kirito's proposal to Asuna. The Day After is a story about Asuna during Volume 4. Rainbow Bridge is a sequel to Extra Edition, which was a special episode set after Fairy Dance, so I guess I have to add that in here as well now? And Sister's Prayer is a tie into Mother's Rosario, but set six months before the end of Aincrad. Because why expand on literally anything else? From here, we can discuss the spin-offs. SAO Progressive began in 2012, also written by Kawahara, and is a more fleshed out retelling of the Aincrad arc, currently consisting of six volumes. It goes floor by floor, so it's going to be bloody long. Newer novels apparently do reference the new editions and retcons, so I guess it's supposed to replace volume one and maybe the rest of the Aincrad material? Regardless, I fully expect a standalone anime adaptation once it concludes. I also wonder how many of the 800,000 retroactive editions to Aincrad will be retold as part of Progressive. Next is Sword Art Online alternative Gun Gale Online, written by Keiji Sigsawa under Kawahara supervision. It focuses on another Gun Gale Online player spanning the time frame from just before Phantom Bullet to… I have no idea. 
It's surprising how little information I can find about this on the wiki, so we'll just place it before Phantom Bullet. Then came Sword Art Online Alternative Clover's Regret, written by Soichiro Watase and also supervised by Kawahara. This one's about ninjas, I think? The description seems to suggest it comes after Mother's Rosario, but that's as much as I can find out. Kawahara also wrote the plot for the anime movie Ordinal Scale, which he apparently considers canonical despite contradictions in the novels, but what do you expect at this point? It takes place between Mother's Rosario and Alicization. There are also a bunch of standalone short stories written by Kawahara which we need to discuss. Hopeful Chant is a prequel to the movie, following an important character from it during the Aincrad arc. Cardinal Chords is a direct sequel to the film set in its aftermath. Distant Journey follows Kirito and Yugo encountering a ghost early during Alicization. 16.8.5 is set between 16.8 and 16.9. You know what? Fuck these decimal stories, fuck sugary days, and fuck the official doujins by Kawahara. Maybe if I reach like $300 a month on Patreon I'll come back to this, but I can't do this right now. Let's talk about Excel World instead. This series is much simpler, thank god. Not being nearly as much of a hit as SAO, Excel World has no spin-offs, and its currently 24 volume long story is told linearly. It potentially takes place decades later, with technology evolved partially from the Nerve Gear VR tech of SAO. Kawahara has been weirdly vague about whether or not they're in the same universe, but Kawahara wrote Verses and Verses 2. Verses was published in Excel World Volume 10 and is a crossover between the two series, where both protagonists fight each other while connected through VR across time, I guess. There's no winner as Kirito is disconnected before a winner can be decided. It might not be canon, but it was published in the main series of Excel World, so I'm counting it. This was followed by Dream Game Crossover, a crossover with The Irregular at Magic High School, written by that series author, where Tatsuya Shiba ends up inside Alfheim and fights Eugene and Kirito. This was then followed by Versus 2, which is a sequel to both. Irregular is confirmed to be set in another world, so I don't have to include it here. With Excel World not being explicitly deconfirmed as sharing SAO's world, I'm going to keep it in for now. The crossovers take place within a week, and Kirito meets with Takeru from the Alicization arc, setting them early in that arc. I'm not going to do the final summary of this timeline because simply placing the stories was hard enough for a non-fan. Do you honestly think I'd stand a chance at actually explaining it? This is really just a rough guide for people looking for words to start reading and a general idea of what order to proceed in. Now, it's possible that there are some manga spin-offs that are actually considered canonical to the light novels, or that I missed one of the billion side stories Kawahara wrote outside of the numerous light novel series because there are a ton of them. If nothing else, I can say this of Kawahara. He clearly enjoys writing stories about this world and these characters he's created. It doesn't seem to be a franchise driven by soulless, cynical marketing, but a genuine love from the creator towards his creation. Even if the end product isn't all that great, I can still respect Kawahara and his work for that. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you. Today's recommended video is Fixing Alfheim, the worst part of SAO by Mother's Basement. It's basically a rip-off of Wasted Potential that came out a month before WP started because Jeff Thu is a fucking warlock who can see into the future to find ideas to steal and products to shill. And he does make what seems like a genuinely compelling story, so, you know, there's that too.